You gon' listen to me. What's good, y'all? Welcome to another edition of The Desk. I'm your host, JCS, the owner of Fonda Ruler Grand Pooba of OCW and its subsidiaries. Listener discretion is strongly, 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 strongly advised. Now you've been warned, so you can't complain. So yeah, it's been it's been a hot minute since I blessed y'all with some verbals and lyrical content. Basically, that's just because, like, you know, life is. Life is very difficult at times, and running this organization can be taxing both mentally, physically, and metaphorically speaking. Um, speaking of metaphoricals, uh, not really anyway. I want to have Benson Hurst, a.k.a. Capo Genovese, on, on the desk. I say that because he, had, he was actually the last person I spoke to before I started the desk. Um, he was asking about trying to find some rookie. Uh, by the name of North PJ or some shit like that. Um, I say that to say this. We were discussing some things real quick. And I had made mention that uh, I don't really talk to rookies. Because rookies is either shook to talk to me. Or maybe they don't know no better. And he's like, oh, but I talk to you. I'm like, yeah, because, you know, we have rapport or whatever. So anyway, in our little conversation... I asked him to be on the desk and he politely declined because he had to do laundry and dishes. Because that's what happens when you become an adult. You got to do shit. Like me, I came home. I washed my culo. I cooked some dinner, which was very delicious. I folded my drawers because it was dry because, you know, I ain't got a dryer. I got a washing machine, but no dryer. Folded my drawers and I decided to sit down and do this. So anyway, I say that to say this. So in the midst of our conversation, uh, I just, I don't know, I kind of just said, yeah, and your match is not on the pay-per-view, and here's why. And I explained to him why, and I told him about four points. So he was like, what are these four points? And I said to to him, I don't remember, but I will find them, and I'll let you know. So I actually found them, and they're on a page on Riot on 492, page two of the discussion thread. So I say that to say this when it comes to me and my new plan going forward for OCW. If you notice, Certified Greatness was actually is actually by what? I don't know. Gonna say eight matches, which is a little bit smaller than the usual. And that's because I'm through with the participation ish kind of kind of thing. For, there's, there's multiple reasons for it, but. The bottom line comes to this. Despite what other people say, or what some people may or may not say, about OCW being in the community and this, that, and the third, OCW is work. And you guys are aware of that. You're aware that it takes work to make OCW, for lack of a better word, work. The guy who does the majority of the work, I would say, would be me, in the sense that I take all of your stuff. And I put it together in a bowl, add a little cinnamon, add a little spice, add a little uh, ingredient X. And then we get the Powerpuff Girls, a.k.a. the show. So, I was noticing that with the pay-per-views, we would have, you know, a Saturday show and then a Sunday show. And then two viewing parties. And the viewing parties would basically consist of the same people, which is basically the Hoots. And maybe one or two extra people, like Dennis. And, uh, and Pam. Now, I don't have a problem with viewing parties and whatnot, but it's a lot of work. And the thing with me is if, if um, it was actually said today by court, I live and feed off of discussion and reviews. When I see them from other people, I get in, you know, like I get a little extra pep in my step and the basic principle on that is it kind of uh, inspires me, I guess, is, uh, is what I'm looking for. The word I'm trying to say is inspires me. It makes me it makes me happy. I'm like, oh, shit, cool. What we're doing, what I'm doing, what we're, you know, what the world putting together is doing something. So it's good to see the product move in that direction. So recently, I've noticed that we do a lot of work and then nobody don't say shit. So that's a problem for me. You want to keep quiet 
you want to you know discuss it privately amongst yourself on the discord that's great whatever but if i don't see it i don't know about it and if i don't know about it then i'm gonna do shit that affects me in a positive light so by that i mean i'm not gonna bust my ass and get every tom dick mary and harry on the show because oh hey i did a role play this week i should be on a pay-per-view suck my dick no you're not now given that the four principles of um of uh how how do i say this the four principles of the actual what gets on a pay-per-view is a couple things so these these four principles if you hit one or four of them there's a really good chance you'll get on a pay-per-view and they're the following number one matches that make sense what does that mean exactly what it says why are you fighting why are you competing against each other if it makes sense hey half the battle number two matches that have a great build this can be subjective a lot of ocw is also considered subjective by my by my terminology what's a great build it could be something that's been going on for six months six weeks or six hours if you've been in the game if you've been in ocw for a long time and you decide to sprack off to somebody else who's also been here for a long time and maybe we ain't see that match that's a great build if you've been you know busting your ass since maybe december to get on the pay-per-view that's an example of a great build you know assuming that you're doing the work and you're putting the work forward that's not saying oh hey it's two weeks before the pay-per-view rp 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 yay no it doesn't happen that way <clears throat> number three matches with people i ch- can trust to perform what does that mean this is actually to the example of uh what i told capo so what i told capo was i'm like look you want to fight uh uh, Austin, I was gonna say Austin Aries, Jesus Christ, Austin Lee, but uh, he's also fighting Ricky, and by Ricky I mean you know Seth Irving, obviously the handler. So I really don't want to double book people. I know it's happened on the pay per view maybe once in one or two instances, but for the most part I really do not want to double book people. So in his instance that would be him twice, and then let's face facts. I told him I told him in private. I'll tell him to his face. I'll tell you right here on the fucking podcast. Ricky and uh and Irving are fairly even. And mind you, they fought already, but they're fairly even. I'll get to that later. Cap is not at the Irving at the uh at the uh the Austin Lee level in the sense of what I feel, mechanically speaking. Now you could be like, oh, you mean he sucks? You know, I don't want to say he's trash, but he's still young. He's still a rookie, so he ain't got, as I said, the Sasong yet. So he can't hang yet. So that would mean that a majority of the work has to go towards Austin. So Austin got to carry it. And I don't know if he got that juice to carry that match. So again, that's not to really disparage Cap at all. But I must, I must call it like I see it. So that, that's where I'm at with that. So putting that into consideration and then putting into consideration also, as I said, the double booking. And then the whole fact that I'm like, I'm not trying to just put everybody on to make her feel good. And that's where we're at. Now, mind you, that actually has a bill. It has a bill since the clash. And I'm aware of that. And uh, number four, championship defenses when applicable. Generally speaking, if you have a strap, a belt, uh, a championship, you're going to be on the on the show to defend. And I'm going to try to make it so that every time, you know, every month you defend because, you, you know, what's the fucking point? I'm already seeing, you know, champions trying to like, you know, slip in and out like, oh, you know, next week, next month. No, no, no. You got to defend every fucking try for the most part. Let's try to do that every month. At least even if it's not on the pay-per-view on the actual show. Come on. So those are my points. And now and these four points also aren't infallible. I'm not going to sit here and be like, oh, yeah, I know everything. I don't. I'm just a dude trying to do the best that I can. And there'll be times where I miss the mark. There'll be times when I bet you there's a dude or dudes or chicks or whatever. And they're grinding it out. And they're just kind of slipping under the radar. They're grinding it out, slipping under the radar. And maybe it'll be a month. Maybe it'll be two. Maybe it'll be the Sean McGee treatment and be nine months. And you know what? Hey, that's on us. You know, that's on me if you want. But that's just the way the cookie crumbles. So you you can take that, take your ball and go home. Or you keep grinding it out. And here's a pro tip too. If you really want to shine. Or if you really want to get yourself like uh, 
set for the next season if you want to be proactive in that in that respect for the most part once Lucian is done and in the books the you know we everyone kind of takes like a step back and they kind of ease back the reins and they they lower it a little bit the volume goes down and we call that the summer lull this is when like anybody can fucking shine but the problem is people choose not to they just be like well you know if they're not gonna do that i'm not gonna do it a prime example was last year with uh with ding uh, uh ding and uh, dennis and them they took that summer and they made the most out of it so that being said that can be anybody who decides to be like yo all right cool now there's an opening now i get in where i fit in so keep that in mind maybe it's not your time now but it'll be your time in like two three months it's all up to you at the end of the day ocw really is what you make it and to the best of our ability so again sometimes motherfuckers might sip through the cracks sometimes they might sometimes people might sometimes one dude might just be at the right place at the right time and get like the rocket ship it happens sometimes it's good sometimes it ain't so that's basically where i'm at with that i'm i'm gonna do what i want to do because the fact of the matter is as i mentioned earlier this it really it doesn't make any sense to me to put in all the effort right and then the end result is is like, you know, one or two people just kind of talking to themselves. And I'm guilty of it, too, that I'll, I'll sit there and I'll be like, oh, you know, and I'll try to spurn a little conversation. It don't happen. It don't happen. And you know what? It makes me feel like I wasted my time. And if I wasted my time, I don't feel good. So if I don't feel good, I pass that savings on to you and everybody else. So just know that that's where I'm going forward. And I'm basically doing what the fuck I want to do. And, you know. You can talk to me if you want, but basically it comes down to this. Just two things you can do. Nothing and like it. Because at the end of the day, I want to see bangers. And if you can't do that for me, you know, you got to wait your turn. And you got to wait. You got to get your, you might get a shot and you might fuck it up. Hey, it happens. But then you might knock it out the park. So do you. You know, that's basically where I'm at when it comes to this kind of shit. Like I'm tired of, of trying to be as, I guess... Uh, equal or whatever like oh the guy who who like tries to look out for all sides because when i do that i just have two two sets of people just going at me so what the fuck is the point i can't win anyway so if i'm not gonna win i'm gonna do what i gotta do to make myself win that sounds really <laughs> contradictory but you get what i mean i'm gonna put on the best show that i think i can do and, and what i want to see and that's basically where i'm at and if you don't like it tough titty because really, it really, it just doesn't make no sense to me to be uncomfortable. It really doesn't. This is supposed to be fun for y'all and fun for me. And I'm not going to say that it isn't because, you know, like, for example, today, this this whole ride, this whole ride thread got me, got me buzzing and happy. It got me in my self-reflection mode, thinking about certain things. Like, uh, you know, a lot of people discounted Cass and he managed to fucking make this main event for certified greatness whether it turns out to be good or not who the hell knows but you know what that's when you know you get your chance to shine so if you got something great if it works out cool if it doesn't <laughs> hey and you know what you tried so whatever it works both ways speaking of i also kind of want to touch on um cg my predictions kind of wish i could put money on this shit but you know i guess uh, i guess we'll we'll find out in a couple of days but uh yeah that's that's pretty much it when it comes to like ocw like i don't really i like the fact we're a community and i don't like the fact that people say oh we're not you know it's like a cult or suck my dick it's it's a fucking community better or worse and i'm not gonna be beholden unto what one person thinks ocw should be versus what someone else thinks ocw should be versus some i i, I don't give a fuck this this is this is my 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 ethos for ocw do your fucking job that's it write fight discuss that's it anything else is extra you want to do extra great you don't cool i don't give a fuck but this whole uh, lead lead no no i don't give a fuck it's not ocw under what the fuck you want it's ocw what the fuck i want and what do i want right fight keep it moving say it with me right fight keep it moving fuck you that ass because at the end of the day, it is what it is. Seriously. 
And as long as people can work together, I'm cool with it. That's basically the bottom line. That's the old country way, if you will. But yeah, let's see what else we got. I had one of my old, like, my negative spiel. It's not really not to be negative, but it's just, you know, come on, man. I ain't got time for that bullshit. On the plus side, the YouTube page is growing f- exponentially. I'm uh, very happy with that. I kind of wish we could do more with the YouTube, but let's face facts. We're not a universe mode. That's our thing. The thing is, we're not, you know, we're not one dude, you know, putting together a couple calls. And then, you know, he hit him right in the PP. You know, we're not that. We're fucking like, I don't know, 50, 60, 80, whatever people meeting online, beating the shit out of each other. And then giving you guys give me the shit and me putting it up and fixing it up and yada, yada, yada. Unless you're Juki in which you fuck up completely and just leave a good minute of of a match screen shout out to juki jesus christ dude it's like the only reason i haven't fucking roasted you a cinder is because you're you're trying but you're fucking so bad holy shit dude you're just oh my it's like like you're like radio uh you're like cuba getting junior in radio you just need like the fucking little cart now yay fucking yugi like yo dude like fuck man I mean, shout out to Russ, Russ Cole with your bare minimum ass writing. Uh, shout out to your laziness. The fact that he was coming out to evil for like, I don't know, uh, like three weeks until I actually forcibly gave you new music. So, I mean, good for you on that front. So, speaking of which, that was a match that was actually put for the pay-per-view. And so people are like, well, why? My thing is, is similar to the Ricky and, uh, and Seth Irving thing is both of these happened on Prime. But both of these have actually been kind of continuing after the fact. And now we're going to see what happens. I think there's more anticipation for the for the Ricky Austin. I mean, the Ricky uh, uh, Seth match, just for the fact that they're very evenish. I know that a lot of people are are uh, are jumping for Juki and Russ Cole. For me, I'm giving it the shot for the simple fact A is to cage and then B for some strange fucking reason. And I'll peel back the curtain. Juki was under the impression that in order to win a match or end the match, he had to hit a signature and the finisher. And he wasn't able to do this. So he got his ass kicked by Russ Cole. So now having the information that he does not need to do this in order to win the match, meaning, I mean, he can hit a finisher and whatever. He doesn't have to hit a signature first. This may prove to be the Juki of old. The Juki who beat the shit out of Leon and had us all sh- like, oh, the Juki who is not a flake. So we'll see what happens. Before we know Russ Cole, whoop his ass again. Who the fuck knows? But it's something to see. So we'll see what happens with that. So I'm kind of excited for that, especially with the steel cage. It'll either, like, I get, like I said, it'll either be really cool or a goddamn car wreck. And if it's a car wreck, hey, fuck it. We tried. Also, um, with rookies, I know that over the weekend we had like three or four Xbox people and like three or four uh, PS4 people. Ain't heard shit but from one Xbox dude. This is with OCW. I, I, don't, I don't really give a shit about rookies. And that might sound callous, but I mean, do something and I'll care. That's basically where I'm at. Do, you you got you to gotta do something. You got to... You know, because once you get through the door, it's easy to get through the door. I mean, you'd be surprised when people actually have trouble getting through the door. It's like, Jesus Christ, son. Like, there's a dude right now that is struggling, struggling hard to just fill out an application. I don't foresee a, a bright future for this young person at all. But what I'm saying is, you know, it's easy to get through the door. And then after that, you know, nothing. If you show anything, we'll book you. But you got to show something. So, uh, you know, it is what it is. So rest in peace, uh, uh, Dirty Mick Mac or whatever. Rest in peace, Sabri, Sabret or whatever. Uh, whoever the fuck else that, that joined the app, I don't remember. And uh, shout out to possibly not alt. Uh, it G2, GT. Fuck it, Quartz, the, the Quartz dude. I, I swear to God, this dude has to be an alt but he seems to know things but then not know things so who, who the hell knows we'll, we'll guess we'll find out i guess we'll put on the the bat signal and batman will come down and let us know anyway 
So let's get on to the predictions and then I can take my monkey ass to watch some Battlestar Galactica and go to bed because I'm old and my bones hurt. Fuck you, H2O. Ow. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. Also, good job with the Riot, man. Um, I was saying earlier before with Riot 493, Riot 500 is coming up. It's going to be a big show. And um, I'll probably, you know, I gave all this shit like, oh, you ain't getting shit. You ain't getting booked nowhere. But for Riot 500, I'm probably going to book like everybody. Because it's right 500, so why the fuck not? So you know, what you, what you see, what you get. But yeah, we'll quick, we'll quick on a real, oh Jesus Christ, real quick on Riot 493. Um, I don't know, man. I said it before in private. I'll say it in public. I am fucking trash, Spider, aka Spooter. I just, for someone who hates the game as much as he does, and does not enjoy playing it. He has become far and away one of the most entertaining characters in online championship wrestling in like the past maybe three to four years. I don't know what it is, but it's just nonstop entertainment. This fucking dude always kills me, son. I just, so shout out to you, you fucking, you dirty camel fucker. I hate you. And shout out to Marble KK, Cassidy Hayes, autistic and autistic and all just... I mean, you're doing what you're doing, so I can't really, I can't really hate it. It's, it's entertaining. So anyway, let's get to uh, the predictions, and we can get the fuck out of here. And I'm sorry if this is not what you expected, but you know what are you gonna do? Oh, shout out to Paul Pew. That stupid music just uh, every time I hear it, it kills me. And uh, yeah, I hate B20, B2O rather. Shout out to KD as well, man. He's been very quiet lately, but I know he's around this in spirit. Uh, and shout out to Jet Draven, who got quiet this week. Do more work, buddy. Or they ain't going to book your ass on turmoil. Well, I think you slick. Anyway, um, certified greatness on the team. Bang. All right. We got eight matches. Let's get through this shit real quick. And as always, I'm going to keep it 100. First up, predictions. Bombshell for triple threat. Eerie Sunshine versus Heather Angelo versus Queen. I don't know if it's Mib or Mab. Mab. If you've been living on the rock, you haven't been aware that these uh that Heather and Yuri have had beef with Heather knocking the fuck out of um animosity. And uh now when they met, this this weird queen lady showed up and bodied everybody. So as far as this goes, handlers included, I can't call it. Because on the one hand, Queen Mab Queen Mab is a scumbag. On the other hand, Heather Angela has a horseshoe up her ass. And on the third hand, Eerie Sunshine is just a scumbag. So I can't call this down the middle, so I'm just going to flip a coin. I don't have a three-sided coin, so I'm probably going to flip a six-sided die. And by six-sided die, I mean my, my D&D die. So, one second. Doesn't make any sense because the number is... Anyway, fuck it. I'm going with Eerie because I like the hymen cutter. And I like, to, I like to say the word hymen cutter. So we're going for Eerie with that one. Okay. Blood Feud. Steel Cage. Russ Coley versus Juki Marley. First match. Russ Cole beat the fuck out of Juki Marley. I mean, knock this motherfucker's braids clean off. I mean, he knocked, he knocked the dread. Like the, the fifth row. Little white kid got a free dread to take home. And they're like, look at this. It looks like it looks like burnt sausage. And it smells like oil, but you know, whatever. Um, I'm going to go with Juki for the simple fact that, as I mentioned earlier, now that he actually knows that he can just hit a finisher and doesn't have to hit a SIG, then a finisher, that might give him the edge he needs to actually fight like a normal person, not be a fucking complete idiot. So, not to mention Steel Cage, so you really can't run around or moonwalk anywhere. Speaking of, shout out to y'all who are less moonwalking. Appreciate that. That's good. So, that's good to see. So, I'm going to say my money's on Juki. Fuck you, Russ Cole. The Baltimore City Street Fight. The team of uh, building B-17. CJ Versus uh, basically the crown. Uh, Code Terror. And Seb Abbott. Did it, did it. Um, hmm. I want to say. I want to say building and B-17. Because while CJ isn't the most mechanically sound. Um, Bill is a fucking monster 
And if it's a street fight, I'm going to assume it's tornado rules, which basically means that Bill's going to hit everybody with everything. B-17 is not terrible. He likes to fucking moonwalk. But uh, in this kind of an environment, you know, what are you going to do? Moonwalk into somebody else? So, um, Seb is a strong candidate. Coterra actually works well as a team. But I'm going to go with the faces just because CJ is going to be reckless. B-17 is going to try to punch everybody. And Bill Ding, Bill, there's, there's going to be a, ch- a, like, I already see, like, a table or a ladder. And Bill Ding managing to, like, just knock five other people the fuck out. Like, with the ladder. I just I just see that happening because Bill Ding is reckless as fuck. That's an ass- assumption that it's, like, a um, tornado rules. If it's not tornado rules, hmm, nah. If it's not tornado rules, they're going to have to spend like a half an hour beating on building. So I, I don't fucking know. My money's on building B-17 CG O'Donnell. Revenge Grooge match. Seth Irving, which um, you went from looking like, what's his face? My man, um, Jesus Christ, Suzuki. So now you got them old school 2007 fucking weird baggy uh, uh, pant, uh, short pant thing. Oh, uh, God, it looks ridiculous. Um, I don't know. Maybe find the happy medium. Who the hell knows? Ricky and Seth. Um, last time we fought, Seth tapped Ricky the fuck out. I think Ricky knows enough to not get caught with that kind of shit again. Granted, he, he only has one finisher, and it was pitched to me that, oh, maybe he can graduate and he can use the second finisher. Wow, that's a wonderful idea. It ain't time, so no. Um, the fact that he only has that one aerial finisher is going to be a detriment but if he's smart, he'll try to bleed out Steph's stamina, and then he can actually hit it and not get tapped the fuck out. I want to say, I want to say Seth, just for the simple fact that the last time, you know, he bodied Ricky. But I'm gonna go with the face this time around because if Ricky does strategy, if he, if he, that's the thing. Ricky is Ricky's a dumb motherfucker. Like he's not gonna use strategy. You're just gonna fucking I'm gonna fucking throw myself. At, he's just gonna throw himself at Seth and then get caught. So if he uses if he uses a modicum of strategy, then he will defeat Seth. If he does the Ricky and just he's he's gonna lose. So it's basically up to that. You know, common sense wins. Ricky being Ricky loses. But my money will be on Ricky using like at the last minute. I'm gonna be Ricky. And he's like, nah, I'm gonna be smart and then fuck up Seth everything. So that's my money's on Ricky. All right, Catherine versus Sophia. Catherine for whatever fucking reason decided that she's gonna. Put her career on the line versus Sophia. Here's a little known fact about Catherine, a.k.a. Kat. Catherine used to be the bombshell champion back in 2013, 14, I believe. And was actually had a pretty good run for the majority of that year. And then, you know, time happens and whatever. Sophia's run has been, you know, monumental. I don't actually think the last time Sophia lost, I can't even remember. Excuse me. Uh, this is going to be do that for Catherine's championship versus a career. I don't see Catherine overcoming the odds, to be honest with you. And it's going to suck because Catherine actually had a decent career. So uh, congratulations, Sophia. You took another career. My money's on Sophia. Sorry, Kat. Um, the perfect circle. Katie Angelo, Tobin Frost, and RD Money versus Dennis Black. And what a perfect circle is. Basically, a perfect circle is... An invention of yours truly where you have three competitors versus a champion. Uh, it goes, it's kind of like a gauntlet. As far as I'm aware, damage does not carry over. So it's basically three, three separate matches. I don't remember. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. We got to get an official ruling on, on that. Maybe next year we'll have damage carry over. So that it's actually a dangerous uh, you know, thing. But basically, whoever wins, the circle closes and that person is the champion. The last time we had a perfect circle, it was Sean McGee. Shout out to Sean McGee, who hates me. And he defended against, I believe it was, shit, I don't remember. Was it Parker? Was it Parker, Tobin? Uh, I think it was Parker, Tobin, and then Pew. But uh, basically, the guy in the middle, Tobin, won. And the circle closed. So Sean was no longer the champion, and Tobin decided to, the same night, to defend against Pew. He lost to Pew, and then you had Nate versus... uh, uh, Pew at the main event of Lucian 10 for the OCW championship. I digress. Um, KD has not had Dennis's black number, so I say no. I think the only one who has a shot is Tobin Frost, and he's in the middle. So if he does that, if, any, if, he, if anyone's going to win, it's Tobin Frost. 
love R.D. Money to death as a human being. He is my one of my favorite characters. But basically, for one month coming back, you, you're not. He's, he's not going to win. So my money's on. You know, my money's on Tobin Frost. And if not Tobin Frost, and then it's black. Uh, H two O versus Tiberius Dupree for the light heavyweight championship. H two O was a scumbag, uh, a fuck boy, a shit brick, a dick bagel, an ass crack, a fuck boy, captain of the fuckery. Don't like him. I don't. I don't care. I'm already sick. What are you gonna do? You gonna make me sick? Or I, I can't. I'm gonna get. What am I gonna get? AIDS? Go ahead, give me AIDS. I don't give a fuck. H two O the H two O curse. Fuck you. Um. I am a Dupree fan through and through. And while H2O is incredibly wily, when it comes down to it, if he can't do the moonwalk, he's not going to be Dupree. Why do I say that? Because Dupree has the knees. Actually, nah, you know what? Let me, let me stop fronting. Um... He came kind of close with Pew. The tag match, he did fairly well. Well, actually, really well. Has a pretty decent record this season. My money, I want to have my money on Dupree because he's been such an amazing light heavyweight championship and um, light heavyweight champion. And this is the other thing, too. Like, the best people are the people who don't want it. Like, he doesn't even want to be champion. If it was up to him, he would not be champion, but he is. And he's doing a great job at it. So, so that's that's why I appreciate him for what he does. It's really even. I want to like bias wise, my money is on Dupree, but I kind of do see fucking H two O winning, and and like being like a transitional champion, like probably losing the first time, the first person he fights. Yeah, I said what, what, do something. I mean, like I want to have my money on Dupree, but I don't know, man. Some something about about H two O energy lately. Something like I just feel like I don't know, man. And then after that whole debacle with 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 uh, Illuminati at uh, at the clash and Dupree, I don't know, man. Just I just feel like there's some 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 fuckery afoot. Ah, fuck it, if we got to call it, I'm gonna say Dupree and have my fingers crossed. Okay, now we're about done. The main event chamber match, the second the the second. Official chamber for OCW. We had one, I don't know, like maybe five years ago. So now we have another one. Yeah, Bobby Minio versus Ryu Matsumoto. Ugh. Versus Sean McGee. Ugh. Versus Mugen. Versus Paul Pugh. Ugh. Versus Cassidy Hayes. I mean, you really can't call this. And like, I know the match got done. I know the match is, is mad long. And I've been having people just messaging me all week with their foolishness. I don't, I don't, like, whoever wins this match, I'm going to be upset. Like, I, re- I mean, whoever, <laughs> just like, I, I, hold on, I need a drink. Jesus Christ, I can't think right now. I'm so fussed. I'm so flustered. <sighs> okay. Let's go through the variables. If Cassidy Hayes retains, you know, hey, he he retained on the chamber, shows shows a lot of balls, and uh, you know, solidified himself as a champion. But he's already like what? He's already defended twice. He's already he was actually the first turmoil champion, and uh, didn't lose in one on one competition. And he was he was the uh, the first riot champion, not the first riot champion, but yeah. So he's in like uh, an elite club with that. Um. I mean, if Mugen wins, he'll be the three-time champion. But we already saw that Cassidy Hayes has his number. If Sean McGee wins, he'll be a two-time champion. As much as he thinks I would hate it, I wouldn't. It would be cool if Sean McGee was champion. He could be like the first black champion, but he's not the first black champion because there's been other black champions before Sean McGee. Who? I don't know. Tobin Frost? Uh Uh-huh. Fuckface. RD Money? Versus? I'm just kidding about versus. Um... If Ryu Matsumoto wins, uh, there's a really good chance I will just turn off the site. I I cannot. I, as much as I love the trash, if he becomes the OCW World Champion, I will turn off the site. I I my 
my cardiologist would agree this would be the best course of action to do this. So I refuse. I will, I will get the crane. I refuse. Bobby Minio. Um, if he wins, he is one of the best writers on the site. And he can write anybody under a table. He would be an underdog champion for the most part. I wouldn't hate this, but it would be annoying because he would talk garbage to me. Um, and then all that's left is, is Paul Pugh, which would be incredibly <laughs> hilarious if Paul Pugh became champion because that, that, that would make him the hmm, three-time, four-time champion maybe. I, I'm going to say four maybe. I know the most championship has been Nate with I think six or seven. So Pugh would be, Pugh would either be three or four. I could be wrong, but I need I need someone to give me a, a what you call it on that a correction if possible. I mean, I wouldn't be upset if Paul Pugh. I don't. You know what? Nah, I would because he just he'll just talk garbage too. Like literally, if like anyone who wins this would be annoying. Honestly, Bobby would annoy the shit out of me. Fucking Ryu would. Would, oh my god I'm just thinking about it now It makes my chest hurt I can't even think If I think about it It actually makes me physically sick Sean I'd be okay with Mugen would be fine Cassidy eh, What are you gonna do And I don't I, don't, god, I, I can't call this match man I really can't Um Shit man I can't I can't call I, li I can't call this I want I want to say Pew as annoying as that would be fuck it it would be it would be hilarious because it's like happenstance so fuck it I'll say Pew but I just this whole thing is gonna be I feel like after Sunday I'm just gonna be like rubbing my rubbing my temples together and just being annoyed in general so fuck it so there you have it those are my predictions for Certified Greatness 2018 that was the podcast as always as I've been saying read watch discuss you think you slick but you're not there's so much history and all you're doing is denying yourself it's okay i'm not telling you to have these these giant drawn out opinions just focus on something you like talk about it so it's not a circle jerk i don't know man it's up to y'all because if you don't i'm gonna do me and if you ain't happy you ain't got nobody to blame but your fucking self so that's going to do it for me. Uh, hopefully next time I'll have my man Benson Hurst on. We can fucking chop it up and get real urban in this motherfucker. I said that. I said that as, as Caucasian as possible. We can get real urban in this mother. So, uh, yeah. So anyway, thank you for listening. Have a wonderful evening. And in the words of the immortal Jim Core fucking net. Thank you. Fuck you. Bye. No, don't. Yeah, we're going with Black Panther. See Black Panther in the theater, by the way. Black Panther is a good fucking movie. Even if you're white, you can see it. I allow you to see it. It's an excellent movie. It's great. All right? All right, good. I'm glad we got that out the, out the question. Have a wonderful night, y'all. Peace. <laughs>